Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and in this video I want to review for you the photo books by Once Upon. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Just a disclaimer here, this is not the sponsored post, so everything you're going to hear in this video is just my honest opinion, however, these books were sent to me for free by once upon. Right, so if you've been on Instagram a lot or looking at photo book apps in your smartphone, then you definitely must have come across Once Upon. I've seen this so many times in ads and also when I was looking for new photo book companies in the app store and I've always wanted to see what the books are like. The one thing that always caught my eyes about these books is the cover which is very very kind of specific to this one company and I think that's a very good thing when a company can create something that you can associate with them and you recognize it as part of their branding. Once Upon is a Swedish company and they are fairly new I think they were established five years ago or so and of course the idea behind the company was to create a very easy to use app for people to print out their photos because we've got so many pictures on our smartphones and they never get printed out and you can never really appreciate them. So that's where the original idea is from. And now they are available in almost every country around the world. They ship worldwide. So wherever you are in the world, you can get these photo books. Now, just because you guys complained before, I'm going to say the prices right now at the beginning before talking about the photo books and then I'm going to go into my close-up shots and talk to you about the cover, binding, paper, print quality and also the editor, what kind of experience you can expect from it. They've got three formats to choose from. This one is the biggest one, which is 27 by 27 centimeters and this one starts at 30 pounds and this one is called the classic. This one, which is smaller, is the compact one which is 20 by 20 centimeters so roughly the size of my palm and this one is 18 pounds starting from 18 pounds and the same size one here you can see they've got another one which is the same size but this one is called the casual again it's 20 by 20 centimeters and it starts at 18 pounds as well now as you can see the main difference is that these two are hardcover and this one is a soft cover so once again, this photo book company is all about simplicity. It's a Scandinavian company, so you can expect very minimalist looks and designs and a very simple way of creating these um, photo books and looking at your photos. Now, what you need to know is that now you can create the books from any platform. You can do it on your computer. You can also do it on your smartphone and you can do it on your tablet. And it works on Android and Apple devices as well. So. Really, it's not just for iPhones. I created the book on a desktop computer, but I also created another one um, on my iPhone to see how the experience is any different. But to be honest, it's almost completely the same. It's just a different layout. So let's talk about the details. The first thing I want to talk about is the formats. And as I showed you before, you've got three different options. And the biggest one is 27 by 27 centimeters, so roughly 11 by 11 inches. Then you've got the medium size, which is 20 by 20 centimeters, so like eight by eight inches. Now the third one is the same size, so technically you've only got two sizes to choose from, and both of them are square sizes, so no landscape and no portrait. Now normally this is something that I would moan about because sometimes it's difficult to fit photos into one specific format and for example if you've been collecting photo books for a long time and you want to switch to once upon but all your previous photo books were landscape then obviously it's not going to look so nice on the shelf so i do understand the simplicity behind that square is usually the the most versatile format for a photo book and uh, keeping it neat and simple is the best way for a minimalist looking company but it would be nice to have one landscape and one portrait format as well let's look at the covers so you've got two kinds of covers to choose from you've got the hardcover which I showed you here and the hardcover obviously is hardback so it's going to last much longer it's a nicer feel and it also has spine text which is 
quite important if you want to stack up all of these photos on your bookshelf then you can just pull off one. I think it's important for a hardcover book to be able to have spine text. The soft cover is a paper cover, is much thinner, but the finish on all of these I would say is matte or very very subtle kind of satin but it's more matte finish and they don't have any glossy option. Now regarding the covers, that's the only option you can choose from, so it's a printed cover, hardcover or soft cover and there's no leather option, no linen option and no other option. But if you look at the design on the front, this is just so recognizable and such a nice design, this title and the little line and the year, the subtitle, and you've got this photo which you can choose to be square, landscape or portrait, so you can kind of customize it to the shape of your photo. The back of them is always empty or blank and you've got a small logo at the bottom and the little barcode on the side which you can't get rid of so you have to have the logo there. But that's basically the design of the front cover. I think it looks really nice. That was one of the main things as I said that caught my eyes. It is one of those things that you're gonna see oh that's a lovely book because the cover is so nice. Moving on let's talk about the binding. So all of these books are perfect bound which means that they are glued at the spine and that doesn't allow the book to open completely flat so you will need to hold it with your hands uh, especially the hardcover books are a little bit stronger I noticed the softcover book is a little bit easier to push down but the hardcover because of the cover is going to be a little bit harder uh, this is the most standard binding method for photo books and a uh, little bit is going to get lost in the middle not too much but obviously it doesn't open completely flat so if you put a photo across two pages just the very middle of the spine is not going to be visible now the binding allows you to have a minimum of 30 pages and a maximum of 150 pages so you can create quite a long book and the good thing is that the price actually includes a minimum of 30 pages and most photo book companies give you 20 or 24 pages for the base price. Let's have a look at the paper options as well. You've got two papers to choose from. You've got a matte 170 GSM and you've got a glossy 200 GSM. Now as you can see in these books I picked two of them with the glossy and one of them with the matte. I think the soft cover is with the matte and you can see that the glossy has a subtle gloss but I wouldn't call it high gloss. It's nothing like a photographic high gloss paper. So if you don't like very glossy papers but you would like a little bit more depth to your photos then definitely go for the glossy one and it's also a little bit thicker so it feels more premium and more elegant. Looking at the colors and dynamic range amongst the two paper types I would say it's almost completely identical. Obviously the glossier paper is always going to be a little bit more vivid it's going to have a little bit more contrast because the, the blacks are deeper and the whites are brighter but in general it's very negligible the difference of the quality is the same whichever paper type you choose from it's whether you would like a little bit of gloss or you would like it to be completely matte and let's talk a little bit about the print quality all of these books are printed you're using a digital uh, press printing technology which means that the image is made up of tiny ink droplets or dots or toner whatever you want to call it and that means that it's not a continuous tone print so it's not like silver halide printing and you can see that in the quality the books have an average print quality if I compare them to the entire photo book world including silver halide printing and inkjet printing but if I compare it to the same category prints offset digital printing then uh, it is very good compared to them and the colors seem very vibrant and very well balanced. I would say the digital artifacts, the tiny dots are a little bit more visible in these books. I'm not sure what resolution they are using and what printer. I assume it's an indigo printer as that's the most common one for these photo books. So it's a good average um, kind of coffee table style print quality but it's not a photographic album quality. And final thing to talk about is the editor and the editing experience. So as I said you can use the editor on the website or you can use it on your portable devices, smartphone or tablet and it's extremely easy to use. You create an account, you log in and you start adding photos from your camera roll or you upload some on your computer. Now on each layout you can add photos, I think you can add up to six photos to each spread and there's a shuffle button which is extremely handy if you kind of get lost with the ideas or you want to see something more interesting with the same amount of photos on a spread then you can press the shuffle button and it's going to show you more and more layouts with the same amount of photos on the same spread until you find something that you like. Now certain things you can't really do like changing the aspect ratio of the photos from my understanding the app 
automatically crops everything to a 4-3 ratio if it's a landscape or a portrait photo and square obviously stays square. So it's a little bit limiting in what you can do but uh, since it's a minimalist book you can't really go wrong with it because the built-in templates all look really nice. It's a wide background as you can see, nothing overcrowding the layout a very Scandinavian look to the inside of the book as well. Another great feature of the editor is that you can collaborate with your friends. So if you went on a trip with four of your friends and you want to create a photo book for another friend, then all of you can start adding photos into the editor and all of you can log in and make changes so you can make it into a teamwork. The one thing I was missing from the editor, which I see with quite a few app photo book creators is that there is no auto function. So what I mean by that is the, the app doesn't allow me to upload, I don't know, like a hundred photos and then auto fill the entire book. So put all the photos into the book without me manually adding photos to each spread. I think these are called like one click photo books and they are quite handy when you don't have time to create a photo book but I don't think this editor offers that at least I couldn't find any such option. So what you need to do is for each spread that you add, you have to add the photos manually to that spread. Obviously you can uh, swap the photos between the spreads and you can move around the spreads, you can rearrange the pages, but you have to create each spread from scratch. So you can't create the book automatically from a set number of photos. So all in all, it was a very easy experience creating the photo books, not the fastest one from the app, uh, photo book editors, but definitely a very nice clean look is the result. And the photo books are really nice. If you like the look of the cover, if you like what you saw inside, then go and check out their website or the app in the Google store or Apple store. You won't be disappointed with the quality. So this is my short little review of this beautiful photo book company that I've been eyeing with for a long time. And now it's in my collection. If you have any more questions about it, leave your questions in the comments. I try to answer them. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.